Hey folks, welcome to another Bottom 5 right here on the Dice Tower. I'm Sam. I'm JT. And we are from a channel called The Flip Side of Board Games. And uh, we are doing this Bottom 5. You're going to be able to see the top 5 of this same category on the flip side in just a few days. But hey, we're doing our Bottom 5 games from 2010. 2010. 2 0. Yeah. 1 0. Old as dirt. You, <laughs> you said this was a hard list to make. This was a hard list to make. Explain. I did there not was, have trouble making well, this. I don't list. know. There wasn't that many good games that I had played, I suppose. That's was, that's the whole point of it. Had, just, you, had you played a lot, you just didn't think that you could you were I having trouble. I played a decent amount, but yeah. yeah, I didn't think that there were any good ones. Um, and there are a couple of good ones in there that uh, that I haven't played mm -hmm. um, that I would sure like to play. At least one that would be on this list. Sure. Uh, but I did the same thing as last time. There were 27 um, games in the top 1,000. 27 games in the From, top 1,000. Yeah, only 15 of those I'd ever heard of. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I guess that's the 15. Uh, and I have nope. The fifteen's not on there either. So. Oh really? No. That's interesting. I I, I guess I do a little bit of a internal weeding out as I'm going through the list. I go through, you know, ten. I go through ten pages, so that's a thousand games. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going through the games, I'm seeing games that I've played, but I'm like, that's not going to make the list. Yeah. I automatically do that. I actually wrote down like five or six that made the list fairly well mm -hmm. and then i wrote down like 20 or so probably 20 that maybe were maybes right. and then i picked my other ones out of those out of those yep okay well that's uh, about the same but i did the same thing i didn't check to see what was in the top 1000 until after i was done with, with my list oh, okay. but that's cool well yeah i i wrote down i think about 21 uh different games and then got my 10 out of that one thing another thing we'll do if you are prepared, and maybe you're not prepared, but I'm gonna I'm gonna share the ten games that didn't make my list. Oh, I didn't bring any of that. I didn't bring any of that. Okay, it's well, all maybe garbage. Can, maybe no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right, I bring I brought I, I have an honorable mention of the one game that I really want to play that probably would be at the top of the list. Hmm. Um, but other than that, all right. So you're gonna mention that later. Okay. Yep. All right, my number ten is a game called Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. <laughs> Never heard of it, so let's in do it. <laughs> Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. Uh, I remember playing this uh, a couple of times, I believe, at a BGG con uh, way back in the day and just having a blast. Us sitting around a very large table. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember how many players. I want to say there were probably eight to ten players in this game. And you have a little flip, uh, like a dry erase board in front of you, and you're tracking your own movements. And it's oh, kind geez. of a hidden person game because some, some of the people in the game are aliens, and the rest of us mm. are just trying to escape from them and get away and all this other kind of stuff. It's a really fun game. Nice. You do your movement on a board in the middle of the table in between turns, uh, but you are tracking where you're moving at on on your actual board. I really had an, a, a good time playing this. It's not one that I've ever owned, mm -hmm. so I haven't really been able to play it a lot, but I do remember playing it from a very long time ago, so it did make a mark. So that's why it made my number 10. Nice. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. <laughs> Very, very nice. Very long name, too. Yeah. I'll put in one more caveat there. There's a lot of games from all of these years that I'm like, I think I played that, but <laughs> I can't remember to save my life. Right. Um, but anyways. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I, I would it, repeat the name, but it's too long. Escape so. from the Aliens and Outer Space. There you go. It kind of rolls off your tongue after a while. Sure. Just got to practice. All right. My number 10 has a shorter name. Not too much shorter, but it is shorter. Um and it's from Richard Lanius and Eagle Griffin Games called Defenders of the Realm. Defenders of the Realm was a really fun game. It's a cooperative game where you're going out to fight the four evil armies, basically. Yep. And the board is really pretty, and it's got these little circular spots all over the board, which is, you know, and they've got a different color to them where the different armies can um, pop up. Yep. Um, it has an interesting, like, um, the mechanism for bringing out the enemies is kind of like pandemic ish, yep. where you 
flip a card, bring out two, flip, flip mm -hmm. three cards, bring out a couple, yep. flip three cards, bring out one. Um, and you have heroes, um, and basically you're going around and trying to take these out, and you work cooperatively, so if multiples of you are in the same area with an, an enemy, you can fight them together. Yeah. Um, it does, ultimately, it's cooperative with one person wins, whoever did the most quests, what yeah. they called quests, yeah. um, quests and killed the most monsters, but technically it's all cooperative and you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to, but it's, a good uh, it's just a really fun game, dice fights, dice combat, and um, cool little miniatures, and like I said, four different armies, um, the dragons, the orcs, the, I don't remember what the other ones were, dragons, the orcs, the undead, and something else. Yeah, but, undead, yeah. I but yeah, remember. I mean... It I, was just a really this fun is a, game. Yeah, this is a game that I wish I still had. I, I yeah. still had in my collection. I, it, I agree with I, that. I, again, I, I, I never this. owned it. Yep. I wish I had it in my collection. That's a better way to say it yep. because it, it is really great. Richard Lonnie's is a great game designer. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's fantasy pandemic before Wrath of the Lich King came yep. out. That's, that's basically absolutely. what it is. Yep. That's, that's what it really feels yep. like. And it is very very much fun yep so great pick so my number 10 defenders of the realm well done sir all right my number nine is a game that is a little bit off the beaten path for me sweet for a number of different is it reasons. A word game uh what does that mean <laughs> Well, that's off the beaten path for you. You don't like word games. I'm just no, not a word game. Right. Um, it is a heavy Euro game. Oh, oh. And it is about the world of fashion. Is this pret a porter or whatever? Pret a porter. I never yes, played that it. That is correct. Pret a porter. I, I kind of, I kind of played it on a bet. Not, it wasn't a bet, but that's the feeling it gave me. Um, uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, Ambi and Toby Valdez, they are heavy war gamers, like uh, the 1800 mm -hmm. train games. They love those things. Super heavy war gamers. They're very good gamers as far as that's concerned. And uh, I was always, uh, back in the day at least, and, and things are really changing now, but that Euro games, I don't enjoy them because they're so dry thematically. Mm -hmm. Sure, That's the way it used to be. Yep. And and so they almost went on on kind of like a crusade of showing me all of these different games. Dungeon Pets was nice. one of them, yeah. Uh, and Pro de Porte was one of them. And I sat down. I think it was at a uh, uh, a MeepleCon, which used to be Dice Tower West before it became Dice Tower West. At a at a at a MeepleCon, they sat down with me and played um, with uh, one of the with uh, one of the brothers Murph. I think I was um, going to say the brothers Murph really liked this. I yeah. believe they talk about it still. Yes, uh, it was the four of us. We played through it, and I really had a great time. Really had a great time. It was great nice. production value as well. I think Portal. I think Portal Games is the one that put it out, and it's a really great uh, production. A great game as well. Just not my usual fare, but sure. it's a good design. So that's Pret a Porte, my number nine. Nice. Uh, my number nine is a two-player abstract game, and actually I was surprised to see this on here because I don't remember this game. I didn't remember this <laughs> game even existed until I moved into the list. I'm like, oh, that one was super fun. Um, you know, it's one of those ones that pops up and you're like, hey, sure. that's a gem. Yeah. Um, and this is a game called Slither. Um, Slither was made by a guy named Corey Clark, Never heard um, of it. and it's a two-player abstract. And what it is is you have a board that's um, square, and basically, one of us has white tokens and one of us has black tokens. And my job is to get a solid line from this side to this side. And your job is to get a solid line from this side to this side. And you'd think that would be pretty Without easy. Without intersecting? Without, huh? Without intersecting? Well, you have to have complete orthogonal connections. Whoa. So, yeah. So it's not like you get a closed line and you're done. I mean, it's a mess trying to get through. <laughs> like it's, um, but... Uh, and all you can do on your turn is you can play one down, and you can move one. But anytime you move one, your pieces can never be, be diagonally of each other without an orthogonal piece connected to it. Hmm. So it's pretty tricky. Yeah. And, and you're moving Sounds your pieces tricky. and blocking stuff, and, and it just starts to fill up with all these tokens, and you're just trying to get through. And you can't move the other person's pieces. You can't do anything with them. Really? Yeah, you got to get through it. And it's a really, really cool so game, actually. So you can be blocked off then? Oh, yeah, 100%. You can be blocked off and be chasing a path trying to get around. And, oh, wow. And you're blocking off here so that you can figure out how to connect across. And they're trying to come down. and Yeah, but it's All a really right. cool game. It's okay. a really nice little abstract, um, simple rules, but... S-L-I-T-H-E-R? Yep. Slither? Slither. 
right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that, I'm, I've never heard of that one. I'll have to check that out. That sounds interesting. It actually is really fun. Yeah. Cool. My number eight. My number eight is a game. It's called Caravellus. I just really enjoyed the uh, movement mechanism and uh, the idea of basically you were you were starting in um, you were starting in the Atlantic Ocean and you were trying to uh, sail around. There were other things. There were a lot of things that could happen. You could run into uh, different kinds of peril at sea, and you had to learn how to deal with those. But it was basically kind of a, a pick up and deliver type of game. Where you're you're taking mm -hmm. uh, uh, stuff from one port, moving it to another, selling it, getting points, money, whatever, uh, taking stuff from that port, moving it, and basically, uh, and again, I can't remember the exact. It's been so long since I played it, and I haven't had it in my collection for so long. Yeah. But um, it was. I, I remember loving the movement mechanism at sea. Huh. And that was the one of the things for a long time. This was one of my favorite uh, nautically themed games that uh, I had in my collection. And I had it in my collection for a very long time, and I don't anymore. And um, that's kind of wearing on me now because I, I would love to bring this one back out. But yeah. I just really enjoyed yeah. this one. Caravellus is, uh, was, was a great game, so it's my number eight. Nice. Nice, nice. My number eight <laughs> is a game that none of you would... Uh fathom that could be on my list period but i said i had a hard time with this and i do like this <laughs> game um especially within the series of games but this is Catan histories settlers of america Whoa. this is the one Catan that i do this like is the one you did say this we did talk about yeah. this a while back and i didn't know it was in 2010 but this is the one Catan i do like and it's because it gives you that extra the railroad yeah it gives you the railroad but it gives you that extra thought process and that extra strategy of trying to get towards the west mm -hmm. um, with the railroad and yeah. the building and the connections and everything else and yep. um, obviously it's America too so I like that theme I like the setting I like the but yeah that trying to get your railroads across um, the country yeah to get to the west while you're doing all of the Catan things right while you're um, rolling your dice to get your resources and all that kind sure. of stuff. So, yeah. But this is the one Catan that, and I had this one up until probably a year or two ago. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was old too. It was deep to heavens. <laughs> but, um, but I did have it until not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. This is one of the ones that feels the least like Catan. Yeah. So it makes sense like that it. you like it. Yeah, it feels the least like Catan. It feels more like a railroad game than it yep. does a Catan game. Yep, with some of the Catan um, mechanisms. Yeah, nope, I totally get that. And I don't I don't know that I ever played this game. And if I did, I've only played it once. But uh, yeah, I can totally see that one making your list. Because I know you're not a fan of Catan, but yeah. the fact that that one made your list, that makes this, that makes sense. I did have it. Well, when did we move here? We moved here in 2019. I still had it then. So yeah, I probably I probably had it till like 2022, maybe 2021. I got rid of it. So somewhere in there. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Look at that game. <laughs> Just remind me of COVID. Yep. No. All right. My number eight. Catan history settles of America. All right. All right. My number seven uh is a game that reminded me of a video game that i used to play as a kid all the time and i sucked at it so and i was also not very good at this game either but it's called asteroids with a y instead of an i and i think i've played this game. game honestly this is i think i've played it but it's been so i don't remember it you're you're basically you take on the pilot of a ship mm -hmm. that's inside uh, a, a huge like arena in space and asteroids are being thrown around mm -hmm. this thing and you're trying to navigate around them and fight the other pilots, pilots that are out yeah. there uh, and it just gave me that same feeling that asteroids the video game used to play you know that little I don't know it was like just lines and mm -hmm. geographical shapes flying across the screen and you're just yeah you know shooting little dots at them yep. and breaking them up and stuff like I that. I remember what asteroids was. Yeah, that's and that's what that's what it remember I I just really enjoyed this game I think because of the nostalgia value of of man I, I I liked playing that game. I was never good at it, but I liked playing it and I really enjoyed playing this one as well. I I just really enjoyed this game and I I don't have it anymore. It's 
It's probably showing his age at this point, sure. but I remember enjoying this game and I remember having a lot of fun. So that's my number seven, Asteroids. All right. Well, my number seven falls into that uh, <coughs> party game category. It seems like I think through this time of my life, 2008, 2010, it was easier to play party games because it seems like there's several in there sure. over the last um, few years that we've done. But this one is called Bubble Talk um, by Cocktail Games. And Bubble Talk, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really fun. It was just like a Dixit kind of game or oh. a... Uh, um, not an apples to apples type of game, but that kind of game where somebody would put down a pitcher and you'd have a hand of cards and all of your cards were sayings in bubbles. Okay. Like this is going to hurt or something like that, you know, <laughs> or this is a, uh, you know, a bad day at the office or something like that. So somebody would put down, the player would put down a card and then everybody would put down a bubble and then he would pick which, who, which one was the which funniest, one, was the funniest, fit which the one fit the best. Oh, okay. And then you'd get that card as a point, basically, and then just go around. But it was a lot of fun and that a lot sounds of like a, things. That sounds like a funner version of Apples to Apples. Yeah. That sounds what that is. Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. And Actually, you know, it seems just, like, it was it. like it was like memes of the early edition. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like what we do now on internet. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, it was foreshadowing. Yes. Um, no, there's a, there's a game that... Uh, Tom really enjoyed called Faces. Have you ever played Faces? I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've played Faces. There would be a, there would be a, like, a, the one who, I don't know, is, is a drug dealer or whatever, and you have to look at your hand of faces mm -hmm. and put it out. Oh, yeah, you think. yeah, I have played and that. It's, yeah. So he's got his, like, beefed up version of Faces. Now. Oh, really? Yeah, he went and printed out a truckload <laughs> got real life of pictures. different faces <laughs> of different people, AI images, you name uh. it. And it's, it's, that's a really fun game to play. It it's fosters nice. a lot of laughter. The same kind of game. It's just yeah. a fun sit down yep. and just some slack, slapstick comedy. Yep. That's yep. good. That's good. Good pick. My number six, the last one for this Bottom five, the last one is probably... These lists of fives are so fast. They are. They're, They're super so fast. fast. So that's not a bad thing, I guess. No, no. But uh, this one is called Founding Fathers. This one's called Founding Fathers. Have you ever heard of this one? I mean, not. Mm. I don't know. Not that I can remember. It, I mean, it, it's it's about exactly what it sounds like. You're basically you're drawing up the 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 the, decora the, the constitution. constitution. You're drawing up the constitution, but it's it's not heavy. It's a super light. It sounds like it's going to be a heavy game when you when you just explain the the. You can't just the get a theme. bunch of random people together and do that now. <laughs> well, you kind of can, but. It's having everybody come together. How are they going to vote? Some of them are, mm. are, are put out into, uh, you, you know, are voted out, and then you have to kind of work to try to get back in. And, uh, Some of it's, them are drug out in the back and shot in the head. <laughs> like back then. <laughs> but it's, it's all that kind of stuff coming together. And, and it's just a, it's a neat, I like games that, that kind of teach you about something as you're sure. playing it without you really realizing that they're teaching you about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this game does. And I really enjoyed that about the Founding Fathers coming together and, and drafting the, the Constitution. And I just really thought it was a really cool thing. Yeah, um, and that's it's, interesting. It's kind of stuck with me ever since. Um, I, don't, I sadly don't own it anymore, <clears throat> uh, so I don't know where it went. But uh, I would love to be able to play it again. <laughs> um, but that's my number six, the Founding Fathers. Wow. My number six, dollar to a dime, is going to be higher on his list. Um, and that has a game called Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders? Seven Wonders came out in 2010. It's an old game that shows yeah. its age. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. It doesn't, it doesn't show, its, show age. its age. No, it doesn't show its age. But it's a closed hand um, card drafting game where mm -hmm. you're drafting cards around, you know, where you're picking up military cards or technology cards yep. or um, cards that grant, get your resources and that kind of stuff. I, yeah. I think everybody's played Seven Wonders at this point in time. I don't know um, about everybody. Most, but a most lot of people, people have, have. Say, pay, played Seven Wonders. Have. It's a very popular um, game, yeah. Um, so I don't know what more to say to it. Uh, as far as the Seven Wonders version go, I do love, I do like Seven Wonders Duel better, um, for mm. sure, which my wife likes it less um, because she doesn't like 
flipping a card for me to look at and take. And she does <laughs> not like that whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and truthfully, if that... I'm going to play Seven Wonders, I'd rather play Seven Wonders Architects. Um, oh, really? Just, yeah, it's just nice and simple. It, like Seven Wonders, if if you're calling it a light, like a introductory game or whatever else, Architects is just a better version of it, in mm. my opinion, just for that. And it's not heavy. Like a step-up version else. or a better introductory better version? Better introductory version. Really? Yeah, I think so. I want to play Architects um, now. I don't Architects think I is a have. good game. Uh, there's a lot. Of, it doesn't have as much to it as, yeah. but it's streamlined and a sure. lot and very Got clean it. and. Um, but anyway, Seven Wonders will be around forever, probably whether will. I like it or not. No, I yeah, don't. I like it just will. fine. But Seven Wonders is a good game. Card drafting is such a fun mechanism. For sure. Me. Yep. Um, yep, yep. And and pairing that with the civilization theme mm -hmm. is like gold. Agreed. So that's that's a good pick. That's Agreed. a really good pick. And uh, will it be on my top five? I'm not saying. Well, I don't think it will be. Maybe. I'm going to make a dollar. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. maybe. Make a dime, I think. Well, um, that is our bottom it. five of 2010. Uh, we're going to get on out of here. You just have to wait a couple more days to get numbers five through one. Over on the flip side, like I said, there will be a uh, link in the description. But before we go there, we did talk about we're going to mention some of the games that didn't make our list. Right now? Yeah. You want to do it well, now or you want to wait? No, that's totally fine. In fact, I think the one game that, well, there's two games that didn't make my list that I'd at least like to play. I'd like to play Dominant Species once. I haven't played that oh. yet. Um, I don't know where that would fit because it does sound like it's big and fiddly to an extent, but I would like to play it. I think, but I think, I think you like Din Dinosaur Island, don't you? I do. You'll probably like... Uh, dominant, dominant species. species, but I think you'll say I don't need to play Dominant Species because hmm. I have Dinosaur Island. Gotcha. Um, but the one that I really regret not playing so far is Alien Frontiers. Um, I can guarantee Alien Frontiers is a game that could even hit my top 100 if I ever play it. I know where it is. I know it's there. <laughs> I just haven't played it yet. So we should have played Alien Get Frontiers, then done the video, and I could have changed it. But um, that's my kind of game. I just haven't played it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you half uh -oh. of the games that didn't make my list now, and I'll give you the other half later so I can keep some semblance, semblance of, of mystery that's for, right. for the top you five have to go to the flip side so a couple of them a couple of them are uh first of all duel of the giants uh was, eastern front was a big uh tank game mm -hmm. and i i'm i'm a huge uh world war ii european theater sure. yep. type type person i really enjoyed that game it had a lot of problems with a poorly written rule book and that, I think, was one of the main reasons why people didn't enjoy it more. Because they just couldn't figure out how to play it right. Yep. So that was that. Panzer General Allied Assault is very similar. Um, but it was uh, made by a different company. Command and Colors Napoleonics um, came out. That was from GMT. That was uses... that a new game or just a... Well, yeah, it was a new it was a new set about the Napoleonic Wars gotcha. uh, and battles and all that kind of stuff that involved Napoleon and in, 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 in that era, um, whereas you know, uh, Memoir Forty Four takes care of uh, World War Two, mm -hmm. um, the Great War takes care of World War One, Battle Cry takes care of Civil War and all that other kind of gotcha. stuff. Gotcha. So um, there's that, and then there's another one called Junta, uh, Viva el Presidente. <laughs> um, <laughs> That was a Milky. really. That's actually a pretty fun game. It's yeah, pretty fun. It's the pretty. The, the the first person kind of uh, passes around these. Uh, um, they're called airplane. Uh, I I call them uh, aviators. Aviators, yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what that's what the first player token is. is the a, person has to wear the aviators. No, they're not. You can't wear them. It's oh. just like a, a cardboard cutout of them. Gotcha. Uh, and then the last one I'll share with them right now is uh, Dust Tactics. Dust Tactics. It's a mm -hmm. huge. Um, I mean, it was a really there were a cool lot miniatures of war game. Games in this, yeah, there in were. But Dust Tactics was more of a. I mean, yeah, it was a war game, <laughs> but it was more of a. It was a dudes on a map uh, board. They they had two versions. There was one you could play on a on a tabletop with terrain and all that other kind of stuff. But they also had um, a board that you could use for it too. Nice. Really enjoyed Dust Tactics as well. So. That's about it, though. We're going to get on out of here. Thank you for joining us here on the Dice Tower. 
We'll see you in a couple days for our top five games from 2010 over on the flip side. So we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. See you later.